Hello and welcome back to Dial H for Hero Clicks. I'm your 16 Ranch Hand co-host Calderness. This episode, we're going to be talking about our legacy card picks for Avengers Forever and answering some listener questions. This is episode 435. Howdy, howdy. Let's get rowdy. So if you're looking for emotional satisfaction, my advice to you is seek professional Hero Clicks. No. Are you serious? Again? How many people even play this game? Like the 100? Instant deadpan humor. Oh, how many six yeah. people yeah. think I am funny? It's the hard days were. Not that you know anything about that. Which, you absolute fools. It's not witcher nonsense. I'm gonna make your clips like that forever. Are you kidding me? <laughs> okay, Google, back some more. Let's attack him because he's a jerk. Wow, wow, wow. Dial H for Hero Clicks is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock every day. We all have the latest Hero Clicks singles and sealed products. You should check them out at CoolStuffInc. Dot com just code dial five it's d-i-a-l-5 percent off your cool stuff ink we're joining like always in the studio is your dial your hero Clicks champion simeon bruce what's going on simeon yeah uh we we should like make an addendum to that because oh it's, uh what, what did they used to call it um like uncontested champion what is oh what sure is the the yeah it's not like raining that. but definitely uncontested he hasn't been contested in yeah. Two years time, might, three might years time, be two years at this point. Uh, but yeah. yeah, like they used to like the the like, intercontinental un- indisputed because I have Indis- not been disputed. Go. It's indisputed True. at this point. Disputed. Um, yeah, yeah. Still a reigning champion, but it does feel the longer it goes on, it feels a little little lackluster because I I don't have any challengers. Nothing challenging right. it. All right. No one's stepped up to the plate yet, <laughs> slash made time to right. do it. Yeah. We'll revisit it. The the Dial H Championship, maybe one of these days, months, decades, will be used again in some form or another. Uh, but let's go ahead and get started with what made us happy this week. Simeon, made you happy, my man? What made me happy this week was I, you know, I had a pretty decent week at work. It was windy. Nice crazy windy all week um but no like it was pretty relaxed week at work not too much crazy stuff happening since it was windy we weren't doing our normal workload obviously and then uh yeah i went to drove through that wind to south dakota filmed a bunch of really fun stuff i'm very sore now and uh yeah i i'm i'm proud of what we did i uh I like the weekend of filming that we did. We did a lot of really cool work. I can't wait for people to see it. Yeah, pardon it's my ambitious. French, but I think it. Yeah, yeah, it's ambitious. That's what I'll say. Pardon my French. Yeah. I think it's ambitious. Yeah, yeah. All right. I won't expand on that. No, it's a um, joke that maybe only one person will get someday. Yeah, they might. If they remember might, this podcast, this might stick then. in their brain by that time. Maybe. We'll see. Uh, yeah, that's what made me happy, too, this week. I mean, I've been playing a ton of uh, TF2 since the Halloween Scream Fortress update has started, so that's, like, always a plus. But definitely what made me happy this week was uh, getting up to Sioux Falls, playing some Hero Clicks, and then filming just a ton of stuff for the YouTube that I am very, very excited for, slash getting all of our uh, Ten of Swords tokens on. So those will be coming soon for Patreon members and all that stuff, which segues beautifully into the, if you want to support Dial H for Hero Clicks, you can do so at Patreon.com. As little as $5 a month, you'll get behind-the-scenes access to like blooper reels, uh, inner workings of videos, you'll get uh, YouTube videos four or five days early before the rest of the world, and you'll get access to our Discord, which is a ton of fun. Uh, stuff above that, you'll get access to Dial H for Hero Clicks action tokens, bystander tokens. If you've seen them, maybe you have, maybe you haven't. Uh, we do fun cosplay costumes and kind of more like closet cosplay costumes, thrift store costumes uh, of certain characters to make bystanders. Uh, our favorite, I can speak for probably both of us, saying like the Wrecking Crew was a ton of fun to make. Um, and so like we did basically all of that, cosplaying like Apocalypse's bystander and the Captain Britain Corps and all sorts of cool stuff. Uh, for the Ten of Swords, X of Swords bystanders coming very soon. Yeah, consider joining the Patreon. Let us know. Uh, but first off, because it's been pretty light on news and everything, we are just going to get into, which blows my mind we haven't done this yet since we already did our I mean, team-up legacy picks. We're going to do our Avengers Forever legacy picks. Excited for. It's always yeah. fun to to guess, gamble, if you would, uh, what the legacy cards are going to be. 
So we always, I always anyway, uh, buy all the figures that we say we're choosing legacy picks to make sure you know that I am just as invested in these picks as you guys might be. Uh, Simi and I have chosen, typically there's 12 figures in a legacy card pool. We already know three of them, Modoc, Rick Jones, and Thor. Uh, so that leaves nine for us to choose. We'll just go back and forth doing our legacy card picks and a little reason as to why. Simeon, who is your first legacy pick, my man? So this is one that I, as soon as Avengers Forever was announced, I instantly Googled it because I thought Avengers Forever was an old storyline. And so I Googled that name and um, it turns out it is an old storyline, but it's also a new storyline. So they're covering the new storyline, but then they also revealed that Rick Jones was going to be one of the legacies. So that is one that we already have locked in. Um, and Rick Jones is notably from the original one. So some of my legacy picks are from like the original storyline of uh, Avengers Forever. So in that storyline, Songbird plays like a fairly key role. Okay. So I picked the Hammer of Thor uh, Songbird. Uh, she is number 037. She has some cool stuff. She's got running shot, force blast, in cap, nine range, double target. I feel like they can do a lot because she starts with a special speed power and a special damage power. Her current damage power is she can use bound, uh, barrier. So uh, notably, she is like a green lantern but uses sound to make constructs. They're like hard sound constructs or whatever you want to call it. Um, so there's a lot you can do with this. Obviously, we got a new songbird in Captain America and the Avengers. Uh, she was a Thunderbolts one. There's also a... Uh, what is this? Four. Fantastic Forces made mm. uh, an REV songbird. So... If I'm throwing out a guess, I'm going to go with the experienced Songbird, not the rookie or veteran. Um, okay. Potentially, if you want to go with the REV version, I'm going to say the uh, experienced seems like a solid pick because we know they like to like add a bunch of flavor via uncarded figures. The Hammer of Thor one is carded, so that's my personal favorite as far as a pick goes. The sculpt's really cool, and then she's already yeah. got decent stats and... Uh, keywords and stuff so i feel like they've got a lot to work with there but the rev one uh this is the experienced one middle of the road uh she starts with running shot the rookie does not and then the veteran is just better stats but also running yeah shot. it's not too different no no so i'm i'm going with this i think that uh because she played a pivotal role because they already picked rick jones i think it's an not really a shoe in but I feel like it's a strong contender for sure. Yeah. Okay, right on. I like it. I think cool sculpts. The Hammer of Thor one. Yeah. Uh, the latest three they made all have like her like purple wings and stuff. I think Hammer of Thor does it the best. It's so it's a really cool sculpt to bring back into modern. I do really like that. It gives them a lot of flavor to mess around with, like a special uh, speed and damage power is really fun. That's a good pick. Uh, my first pick. Uh, since we have a Thor coming, I'm hoping we're going to get the uh, big three. So my first pick is going to be uh, Marvel 10th Anniversary 009 Iron Man. He's, I think kind of a, a legacy figure because he was meta for a little while because of his adaptive armor trait is when he would take damage from a character assigned a relic or resource, he ignores that damage, and then he rolls a d6. On a 1 through 3, you deal him one unavoidable damage instead, and this ability can't be ignored so something crazy like that, but like it's an equipped character, you know, when he would take damage from an equipped character, uh, he just ignores it. And then on a one through three, you deal him one unavoidable. Obviously, four, five, six, he'll, you know, take nothing, which is awesome. So that's just it made his eight clicks of life way longer than it should have been back then because everything had a relic or resource. And I think now, especially with the equipment rules changes, could be really cool. Uh, he's got some special attacks in there. He's got a special damage, which is, you know, good. Uh, ironically, it's called Stark uh, Resilient, which is really funny. Uh, resilient, whatever. Uh, like Captain America, so that's pretty cool. Tony Stark Resilient going on there. Uh, that's neat. But yeah, so M10 Iron Man for the for my first legacy pick. Okay, yeah. Uh, I'll go along with my Iron Man pick. Ooh. Um, so I was I was racking my brain earlier, and I was like, man, which Iron Man could you go with? Blah, blah, blah. I was like looking at all of them, and I was thinking, 
There's so many good ones to choose from. There's a lot of really bad ones to choose from. Uh, but I decided to go a little bit outside of the box, something that WizKids hasn't done yet. So this is a Dark Horse pick. But I went with the Iron Man briefcase armor. Ooh! So the, yeah, the the actual relic that gives you Force Blast and invulnerability. How much? Like, I know that there's a ton of these out there, so it's not like a hard thing to get. It's technically an LE, but it's not hard at all to get currently. Um, and it's still technically, if you want to like house rule it, a pretty decent object to equip. Um, I wouldn't do like the. I wouldn't suggest doing the relic roll. I feel like a five six is a bit high, a bit hard to equip. Uh, but yeah, I think the Iron Man armor could make a very interesting. You know, equipable invulnerability, equipable flight, and then they can pick something else. They could keep Force Blast if they want. Flight, Force Blast, and Bolton. Pretty easy to do. Okay. Make it, you know, five points, ten points, something around there. And yeah, that's instead of actually picking an Iron Man, that's the one I went with. It's a wild pick. I yeah. would love if they start doing that, though. I think it's, it's, just it's one there. of the more iconic equipments in my mind. Obviously, this is like an Avengers themed set. But, like, I can pick a lot of equipments or a lot of relics, I guess. A lot of relics that I think deserve to be back in the game because they look cool. And this is definitely one of them. Okay. For sure. hope so. I mean, I'm pretty sure I have one bouncing around there somewhere. Uh, my next legacy pick to go on with the big three is, this is a surprise to no one, but Hammer of Thor, Captain America, it's got to keep. I mean, I've been saying them since the dawn of legacy cards. I want them to be made. Yeah, he's just a very iconic version of Captain America. He's a very iconic figure just for hero clicks in general. Like, there's that time when hero clicks was dead and they, before NECA picked it up, and one of the things they previewed, one of the first things people saw that let you know hero clicks was coming back was they had little cards that would just say the name of a special power on it at the time, and his deflection trajectory was one of them that they saw, like, leading up to, like, Origins or something. I don't know what it was at the time. So it got people so hyped, and then, of course, it was nutty. The whole line of fire is blocked only by walls and indoor blocking, so you could shoot through, like, all this crazy stuff. Uh, but if they made this cap nowadays, you know, 10-3, everything that's all, like, solid, I don't know if I'd mess the stats too much. I think giving him also uh, traded charge combat reflexes would be really good. So now he's got combat, reflexes, and ESD top dial. And then when he goes down to his close combat expert clicks with like no movement attack whatsoever, down dial, he's a little bit better there too. Um, and then I love the deflection trajectory to be like a, every time he hits with a range attack, he can draw a line of fire from a hit target and then just keep drawing line of fire like a, a, a Hawkeye or Jason Wingard mind control type chain bouncing, attack would be really shield, awesome. Yeah, yeah just, he just keeps ricocheting, bouncing the shield off of everything. Maybe even being able to, uh, when he makes an attack, he can target a piece of blocking terrain, and then from that blocking terrain, he can draw a line of fire and target somebody else. Like, he's bouncing it off of a wall or blocking terrain would be really cool. Um, but yeah, so like that cap, big pick. Fingers crossed for him for a while. But yeah. All right. Uh, I also agree with that cap. I just thought I, because I know that's the one that I would lock in, I also went with the Infinity Challenge, uh, the unique 148 Captain America, 35 points, leadership, ESD. Um, you would have to do a lot to make this guy like worth even 35 points uh, in like modern. But it's a uh, bossy nurse Captain America. Yeah. That's what I called him. My he gosh. Like I, I actually have this sculpt and I was looking at it. Man, the, the ratio from like shoulders and chest to like hips and then right below <laughs> hips, I will say. Yikes, yeah. he is taut. He has a, yeah. a tiny little waist, and uh, he's in a very proud pose, I will say. Um, but yeah. <laughs> nevertheless, a very fun like sculpt. Uh, he's also got like the triangle shield, which isn't something we always see, uh, the very pointed shield instead of the rounded one. Um, but yeah, this, this cap could easily have some like stuff that just makes him like an ultra support kind of piece some like avenger act like extra stuff to go along with like his printed leadership um doesn't have to like really you don't have to make him like big punchy cap because obviously oh. it's going to be hard to make it like the eight attack that goes down to a four worth anything <laughs> yeah. but uh yeah you know if they make him like 30 like 20 to 30 points and he's just leadership and does something like enhancement 
Um, I'd say like enhancement and empower, but if they share a keyword, it like works within like six squares or something. Ooh, it'd be cool. I think that'd be like worth it. That'd be like a fun cap pick. But that's my my pick because I also hope for the one that you just talked about. So this yeah. is my my backup Captain America. Okay, sweet. Uh, glad to glad to say I have this guy. Such a weird Captain America. He, he has that that Liefeld uh, body for sure. Yes, very um, very much so. I think the rest of my picks after this one are kind of weird picks. So I'll do this. But uh, I have a Hulk pick. I talked about uh, with you this earlier. Uh, the rampaging Hulk. Yeah, new guy knight. But the rampaging Hulk is just this cool sculpt of Hulk. Uh, double. Like punching, slamming the ground, um, double fist in the ground, if you would, like rocks jumping up and like flying away. He's this crazy 10 click long dial. Um, he's got this big special speed power and then some special uh, damage powers in there, some wild just stats going all over the place. I just think it's really fun. It's a really cool, big, iconic, crazy Hulk dial. That'd be really fun. And I think, you know, you think Avengers, you're like, ah, oh, Hulk is an Avengers guy through and through. So. I'd like to see it. Uh, rampaging, maybe not so much an Avenger type Hulk if he's just going crazy. But I don't know. I really like the sculpt and I'd really like to see him get a legacy card. Yeah. I'll just lump mine in because I also had him on my list. Um, oh, nice. <laughs> nice. I, yeah, I've been, he's one of the few I've been, every time I'm like under the $100 mark at Cool Stuff Inc., I'll toss like some legacy picks in. And this Rampaging Hulk is one that I've uh, tossed in a few times. Because, yeah, he. It's a very cool sculpt. It's old enough that it deserves like a boost in like a lot of different ways. But yeah, it's just mostly the cool sculpt. Even if it never gets legacied, I'm not gonna be sad because it's something I can put on my shelf or like my desk, and I'm not sad about it because it's a cool sculpt. No, absolutely. My next up, the rest of these, like I said, are kind of weird. I'm going with the Age of Ultron Wonder Man. This is his green oh. and red costume. I think a Wonder Man's not too bad of a, a pick idea, honestly. No, I also was um, thinking Wonder Man at one point. So I was thinking the more classic style costume. Part of me wanted to say the first Wonder Man I ever got, which was the Avengers one with his like red uh, where in the world is Carmen San Diego jacket he's wearing. Uh, but I think this Wonder Man could potentially get a legacy card. Uh, he's fun. He, he's just got like a trait. He can also get like Masters of Evil. He's got a little red line in his dial where he doesn't die if he's uh, crossed that line. He's really neat, but I would like to see maybe a cool like energy distribution weird type of, type of trait for his ionic stuff. But yeah, so Wonder Man it is. Yeah. Wonder Man's important in comics for a lot of reasons. Um, like Vision doesn't exist without him kind of things. Right. Um, but yeah, like have not seen him in the MCU and I don't know if that's just because he's fallen out of like favor in comics, like never really was like a big important player, but um, he is like really? important for several uh, like earlier Avengers runs. I should say like mid nineties kind of like Avengers runs. Mm -hmm. My next pick, I will go with, this will be my last uh, quote unquote hero kind of pick. So I went with chaos war, Nick Fury. Cause I think, okay. I was trying to think of like, uh, more, I don't know, like support characters to the Avengers, not necessarily like the Avengers themselves, but people that are tangentially, they're not like quote unquote Avengers, but they interact with the Avengers on a daily basis kind of thing. And so I went with this Nick Fury. I think it's a cool sculpt. It's, you know, like the Samuel L. Jackson, Nick Fury is what I'll say. Nick, Nick Fury, Nick Fury oh, Jr. Or okay. like, uh, Ultimate's Nick Fury, but he's on like the brig of like a helicarrier, so he's got this like railing in front of him. So it's like a very unique sculpt. Mm. He's doing like this big proud pose. Um, he has two special powers. He has older than I look, which is his defense power, which is leadership and willpower. Could easily be updated to anything else, uh, or it could just keep that. To be honest, he's only forty five points. So I don't know how much they'd mess with that. But then uh, he has the man with the plan, which I think is always like a fun gimmick that you can mess around with because like planning can involve a lot of different powers and stuff. So that's his damage power on click one and then his last two clicks. And that's when a friendly character misses with one or more attacks, you may roll a d6 after re actions resolve 
On a result of a six, you may remove an action token from that character. Nick Fury can only remove one action token per turn this way. So, uh, for the same points, if they gave him the Fabian Cortez treatment, and when you miss an attack, after you like after actions resolve, you roll a d6, and maybe on like a five six, you remove an action token, and then you get like a mission point that way. They could easily make this Nick Fury like a solid mission point figure. And I, I just think the the sculpt is cool, and I wanted like a pick that wasn't like an another Avenger, um, but also like one of the good guy kind of picks. So, yeah, that's my okay my last quote unquote hero pick. All right, uh, the rest of these kind of maybe Wonder Man sort of gives it away, but my favorite thing about the Avengers is like the Earth's Mightiest Heroes TV show that was on like 2013, 2012, around that time. Uh, so that influences this next pick, uh, which is the secret, uh, man, I said secret, goodness gracious, Supernova Graviton. I really like this sculpt. He has all these cool rocks uh, floating around him and he's standing on them. But Graviton is one of the first villains they fight in Earth's Mightiest Heroes. Oh, yeah. Uh, which has one of the coolest theme songs ever. Uh, I forgot but about But he's, yeah. you know, one of the old, he's a, he's a unique, so he's one of the rare uniques they have. WizKid seems to like doing like the figures that are old, no cards and stuff. And this Graviton's got a 12 range triple target. Um, he has like an 11 attack in cap and like a three damp. So, like his stats aren't nuts, but his range is triple. Nuts. Yeah, triple um, bolt, 12 yeah, range. Yeah, triple bolt, 12 attack. Um, or sorry, no, 11 attack, but 12 range. And he's only got like an eight speed running shot, 17 impervious, three damage. He doesn't have any really crazy stats besides that. And it, it only goes down from there on his last click. Uh, last two, he's a four and five with a seven attack pulse wave, um, which ain't as good as it used to be, but it's still interesting. I think you could give him some cool, like gravity manipulating traits, some gravity field stuff. Do like only has the science from Flash kind of thing. Oh, or yeah. Like cool. Leland, if someone's like, charging in we've seen this like like yeah. those kind of traits before so it's yeah i think it'd be fun you know maybe not quite the same like unis the untouchable type of trait um but something around the way of like a gravity field and fencing and maybe being able to move blocking terrain around or hindering markers and stuff around would be really really cool but yeah i just really like this graviton i chose him over the other graviton i think the sculpt's cooler i like him floating on the rocks and stuff right, there yeah um but yeah the other graviton uh, probably like a more, I mean, obviously a more modern dial, but like way more also modern, yeah. way heavier point cost. Um, do you, what did you think about like the Agents of Shield Graviton? Because one, I, I love Was that there? actor that they picked for it. Oh, in that show, it was me for a loop when uh, Talbot. Be- that was wild. I was yeah, like, oh, it was weird that that's. I like that actor. Yeah. It was just Looks weird like that though, they, which was cool, shifted it so much. Yeah. yeah. He does have like the face that matches like Graviton's face. It does um, and like when he finally had like the the goatee and like the white in his hair, I was yeah. like, "Dang, this is so good." He got I like, didn't yeah, like he the got the like the suit and stuff that he was in, but I liked him a lot as Graviton. That season was just really weird season. I actually Graviton's thought Graviton's one of those characters that I've just he's essentially a version of Magneto, but like in comics and in yeah. other media, he never gets like played up the way he should. I'm like, he's he controls gravity. Yeah. So like in the show, that was probably like my best, my most favorite version of Graviton because he literally just like condenses like the gravity mm-hmm. of like a person in like a single point and like turns them into like a yeah. little, little black hole, like oh, collapsing them in on themselves. Oh. And like it was disturbing, but it's like that's what Graviton would be capable of. And we don't see that in most yeah. media, but Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Graviton actually was pretty scary he messed stuff up. I will say, I thought, like, because in like, the first season, they have that weird gravity gunk. Yeah. So I thought that we were going to get Graviton, like, way sooner. Well, and, like, uh, then, a like, scientist gets, like, sucked a long into time. it. And I was like, oh, that yeah, guy so I is Graviton? Yeah, he was going to be Graviton. He's no. going to be Graviton? But, yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, that dude. This random, like, kind of... That guy? <laughs> random scientist, dude. No, I liked how they did Graviton. He was really cool. He's, he was powerful. Um, but, yeah, the Glenn Talbot becoming him. Oh, out of left field. Yeah. Um, it was still Saul. I really liked like the way he looks, the way he uses powers. That would be a a really cool pick for. So that's where I'm swinging now. I'm shifting over to. I really want to see some villains. Um. So my le- my next legacy pick 
I'll go in order of, so I, I went Songbird and then the Iron Man briefcase armor. So I'm going to go, I don't have a villain for Songbird because she's kind of her own villain, but um, yeah. a villain for Iron Man, that, like this is such a, such an out of left field, probably don't bank on this one at all kind of pick. But Fing Fang Foom, he is probably like one of the coolest Iron Man villains that has ever existed. Um, there's three versions that all have the same dial, so it doesn't matter which one you get. You get a Fing Fang Foom that has like this dial. Uh, okay. He currently has a 1,200 point, I think, 900 and 600. Let me double check. Fing Fang Foom, and not the toe, although the toe, I'd, oh, I'd not accept just the, the toe. toe object. I'd sadly accept the toe object. Yeah, 1,200, oh, 900, and 600. And so if they updated this guy, I... I feel like a lot of people would be mad because he's already expensive to get. And this would like really shove him up over like the, the price line for most people. But if they updated him just to be a casual piece where it was like a 600, like his 1200 point dial is now 600 points. His 900 point dial is now 450. And then his uh, 600 point dial is now like 300. I don't think anyone's playing that 300 point dial like competitively. So I don't think you have to worry about that. But at the same time, like there's so much stuff that you could do with him because he's technically uncarded. Like he does have a play sheet or whatever you want to call it. Yeah, big but, thing. Yeah, he's technically like an uncarded uh, figure. So you could like add whatever you want to him, do all kinds of crazy stuff. And then he's got these like crazy stat lines that still make him at like a threat even today. Like a 14 attack at 600 points, five damage, 10 range, two lightning bolts. That's a pretty solid top dial and then if you play him like 1200 points i mean 1200 points he's gonna get merciless mercilessly attacked because there's just a lot of stuff you can play against him but a 20 defense with impervious six damage 15 attack 10 range you know an 18 speed with charge wow who's he oh my charging? god Dude. Who, who is he charging like what what point of the map is he going to? <laughs> that's not as crazy as like lower down in his dial he has like so click 5 he has an 18 speed with running shot so that's a 9 square reach plus his 10 range which is just 19 squares of the board yeah uh this is a Love dark it. horse i wouldn't suggest going out and buying up a fing fang foom specifically for a legacy yeah. card pick but i really like the idea of it i think they've been picking some 2 by 2 stuff he's obviously a bigger than 2 by 2 figure uh, I think if they were going to do one, this would be like my pick because, man, I just really want to see Fing Fing Foom back in the game. And I feel like this might be the only way. So wild. He was in the Shatter Mountains, whose back scrapes the mm. sun. <laughs> really cool. He whose limbs Shatter Mountains and whose back scrapes. Oh. Like, and they've done Fing Fing Foom a bunch of times in comics where he's yeah. been just like normal Foom, a mind controlled thing, or like the robot from the next wave, oh, yeah, yeah. you know? Like, there's a bunch of different versions they could go with. I think that's what these multiple dials are kind of meant to represent, or they're just him getting weaker. I don't know. Um, but he's used a lot, so it'd be really cool. Uh, my next up is... Ooh, let me go back and find it. Uh, oh, yes. I, I lied. I do have more heroes. I actually don't have that many villains. Uh, Shang-Chi from Avengers, the very first carded Shang-Chi. He has oh, yeah. no special powers. He has no traits. He. Uh, uh, I really like him. He was a big feature in... Uh... Our top Shang Chi video. He was he was a big feature in the top. Shang he was like at least <laughs> in the top three, I think. I think you did. Yeah, you put him in the top three, and I think rightfully so. <laughs> um, he's here's for hire, martial artist, Marvel Knights, but he's an eleven for two close combat expert top dial with just leap climb. I think his super simple way of like like really good is if he's like attacking uh, somebody. And there's no one else adjacent. He modifies attack plus one, but he's still got like tens and nines, so it's not bad. Later down dial, give him traded charge and combat reflexes. I think would be really good, especially combined with that climb. His kind of low defenses throughout it, and then just make him kind of maybe cheaper, like a thirty point traded charge combat reflexes, which is no other changes for Shang Chi would be really good. Yeah. So I really like this figure. That, uh, wild card, pretty solid. Yeah, Spider Man TA. So. No, he can wild card Avengers if you want. <laughs> sure. Yikes. Uh, but, like, you know, shield, P, 
Guardians of the Galaxy, like whatever, like wild cards, just call it. But yeah, I'd really like to see the Shang Chi brought back into modern because I think he's so fun. Yeah, I agree. Honestly, if they picked any of them, um, I mean, obviously not the the modern War of the Realms one, but if they picked the Deadpool Le, or like the Deadpool one or the Le or the Avengers one, I wouldn't be mad because all of them are. Yeah, yeah, all of them. I put I put all of them in my top Shang Chi's of all time video, so they they all yeah. got to be pretty good. Next up, so I went with Iron Man's one of Iron Man's villains. I I know, I know Fing Fang Foom has been several people's villains. I can't remember if it was like the Hulk that just like tossed him into space one time, and then Fing Fang Foom was like all sad. Like there's that comic panel that's like made yeah. me feel real bad for him. He's like, I'm just like big bad guy, and someone just like tossed me to the moon. Now I'm just like on the moon. This sucks. Anyhow. Uh, after Iron Man, we went with Captain America, so I'm going to go with my Captain America pick, and obviously, that's got to be Red Skull. Uh, there's a Ooh. lot of Red Skulls I've played throughout the years. I've probably never played any of them more than the Avengers Assemble one, a 200-point mind control piece. He's one of the first guys that I remember have had uh, mind control and then didn't take feedback damage, but I went with the Captain America set, 052 Red Skull, because dang, that sculpt's way better, and he's not, like, relying on Professor Xavier's brain. This is, like, actual Red Skull. So 140 points, Hydra team ability, 6 range, 1 lightning bolt. Uh, he had a trait that was Captain America's cloned body. So, like, Super Soldier Serum infused Red Skull. He could use close combat expert and leadership because Captain America's body exudes leadership. Apparently. I guess so. <laughs> yeah. The cloned body of Captain America. He's standing in, like, this big smoke cloud that's, like, all green. He's, yeah. He's, you know, got that, like, SS uniform kind of look. And he's got his, like, whatever, little pistol. He does have a... He's got a full dial of poison. His last four clicks are a special attack power that's poison. And then opposing characters... Uh, adjacent opposing characters at less than 100 points or named Captain America are dealt two damage instead. Ooh. Which, yeah, pretty good. Pretty good. Um, it is good. If they change that to like some sort of like pen poison, it'd be about the same. Pretty good. Uh, he starts with Outwit and then gets a special damage power for clicks two through six. Uh, so everything but its last two clicks. And that is Tactical Genius of the Reich. Uh, if an opposing character within eight squares is adjacent to two or more characters friendly to the Red Skull, modify the opposing character's defense by minus one. Mm-hmm. Now, this is just similar enough to Masters of Evil that I think it was, if it was like something along the lines of friendly characters within maybe not eight squares, but friendly characters within like six squares can use the Masters of Evil team ability or can use the Hydra team ability, I think something along those two lines would give you the same effect the tactical genius kind of thing uh, without requiring the exact same wording. I really like this guy, mostly because the sculpt. I don't know how likely like it is for WizKids to pick a uh, Nazi for a legacy card. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, you know, he does have a power called tactical genius of the Reich. So you could change it. They think it changed the wording. Rough. It's rough. It but is, yeah. uh, there's, I mean, it's cat. We know there's going to be a Captain America. We just know that. Got to be. It's yeah. an Avengers Forever set. There's going to be a Legacy Cap. There's got to be a Legacy Red Skull. To <sighs> that go like with. charge back then with Close Combat Expert, not great. But now that he's like oh, a twelve yeah. for four, it's really good. <laughs> a twelve for like, four top dial without wit. Yeah, that's solid. <laughs> not bad. Obviously, cool. so 140 points. I think this guy in today's game, just as is would be okay at 60. I don't 60. even think I, I don't even think about half. 60, I think 70. Yeah, I think 60's the sweet spot just because the defense values are so low. I mean, they cut that Modoc in half. I could see him getting yeah. it half or lower, honestly. Uh it'd be cool if like that Modoc he gets spit out some uh some like Hydra by Oh, if they yeah, if they just straight yeah. up like added an extra trait that's like here's some Hydra agents. Or and then maybe his like dudes. Uh, tactical Reich genius damage could like affect them somehow. Be really fun, yeah. you know. I would dig that. Also, mission points every time he poisons somebody. Also, uh, yeah. Damage. Oh, yeah. Just everything. Every legacy has mission points now. Mission points. Yes. Give it to me. Give it to me. Uh, my next pick is this is uh, for real. My last hero. I promise. 
Hercules from Infinity Challenge. I feel like I always got to choose one year from Infinity Challenge or Hyper Time when I do these like legacy picks, just because it feels like they do like to reach into those sets. Uh, so the veteran is nine clicks long with a full dial of super strength, and almost a full dial of toughness. He doesn't have it on his last click, um, but he's an eleven for four attack, no speed powers, no attack pa- or no damage powers, and his highest defense is his fifteen with his toughness top Ouch. dial uh, at eighty three points. I think we could do some really cool ability with his fair Greco Roman like wrestling type stuff he does, where it's like and charge up and once he's adjacent to somebody no one else can become adjacent to that like fight or maybe just like elasticity charge sidestep become really agile and moving you know combat reflexes and again like he can't be shot when he's adjacent to an opposing character and no one can move adjacent oh, yeah. just like something give really him, cool give him the ww team ability yeah basically <laughs> yeah uh, make him like a, a real close brawler but i like this hercules i think he's got He's got that big, goofy Infinity Challenge body sculpt. So, yeah. you know, that. Where, they, <laughs> where he's, like, carved out of was play. No scale. They just, you know, some characters yeah. are this big, some characters are this big. Yeah, but yeah, Hercules being my next pick. I don't know, I think he'd be fun. I think, yeah, with, with uh, him appearing yeah. in the latest Thor movie, or at least the yeah, after exactly. credit scene. Spoiler. Uh, yeah, that's ooh, the after credit scene. Like, two, three months. Yeah. If he, I mean, it's it doesn't spoil anything, but with him appearing... Um, it's possible for sure. Yeah. I feel like, yeah, I feel like he might actually be in the upcoming MCU kind of franchise in some way or another. All right. Let's see. I went the captain or uh, yeah. Captain hey, Iron Man. So then it, captain. Uh, Rampaging Hulk was the next one. That was our mutual pick. Oh, um, our so a Hulk villain. This is uh mutations and monsters. I believe Ooh. Uh, the leader zero four, four, the leader. This is the sculpt where he's big old like twelve head, the forehead that just like reaches to the skies, uh, sitting next to two moloids, arms crossed, a massive, fun forehead. sculpt. Yikes. Like first and foremost, very fun sculpt. He's got the minions of doom team ability, which does not help him a whole lot. One hundred sixteen points. Uh, he has two special powers and no traits, so only has the scientist keyword. Obviously, that could be retroactively add a bunch of keywords to that but uh his first special defense power for the first three clicks is the leader can use mastermind and toughness when the leader uses mastermind he can treat any friendly character four or fewer squares away to which he has clear line of fire to as if it were adjacent Uh, i think we just clear this up and we just say like when the leader uses mastermind he can treat characters four squares away as if they were adjacent uh, the, the, like just no line of fire needed. He's just yeah. masterminding to people four squares. Weird, they felt the need to say four or fewer. Like yeah. only if they're exactly Legacy four Apocalypse, squares away. Yeah, Legacy Apocalypse can mastermind to his range value, which is the same as this guy, eight squares. So I feel like that would be perfectly succinct to what they're yeah. willing to do. Uh, I would like to see a trait that spits out specifically because this guy has those little like moloid creature things next to him i don't know if they're moloids or if they're what they are exactly but specifically because of those i would like to see him have like a trait that spits out bystanders that are like at most just give like empower or something maybe they're like the uh fantastic four moloid where it's just like sidestep uh stealth and empower kind of thing toughness uh, his special damage power is the leader can use outwit and probability control. I would like to see a special outwit that can, like, you know, same thing that, like, uh, the beast from uh, like Empire. Sorcerer Beast? Yeah. Is that Empire Beast? Yeah, Empire. Yeah, Empire. Uh, Chase beast. The same kind of, like, outwit where, like, you can free action, like, remove protected outwit from somebody for a turn and then outwit them kind of thing he does have eight range so on this dial uh he is 116 points currently i would imagine for what i'm offering like bystander spit out um a mastermind and then like a special outwit i think a 60 point so like literally cutting him in half would be like the top line where i think this is playable 
Um, 75 points is what you pay for Beast at the lower dial. This guy's got a longer dial. He's got a little bit better protection because of the mastermind. But, um, no, I, I think that, yeah, this could work. Like, he's obviously not doing a whole lot of attacking. He does a psychic blast printed on him with an 8 range and 2 damage. So, it's not like he's incapable of damaging people. But, uh, yeah, he's just, he's uh, like one of the, like the top, like, outwitters in comics, right? He, like, outwits the whole. Yeah, oh, he's got sure. machinations. He's got plans. That kind of thing. Leader. His, his special Brain. damage power is just called intellect. Wow. <laughs> it's like if they just changed it to like smart. Something not many people have, a Hulk. <laughs> okay, leader. Smart. At yeah. me, intellectual. Every well, move I make is a big brain move. Whenever ah. you get angry, you get stronger. But whenever I get angry, I get intellect. I... Intellect. Go on Reddit every day, so you can only imagine <laughs> how smart I am. Yeah, I bet you haven't even seen the latest season of Rick and Morty, have you, Hulk? <laughs> so uh, smart, so highest smart. IQ in the world. I'm intellectual. Oh gosh! All right, <laughs> I can dig the leader pick though. That's fun. Yeah, we'll we'll add a mission point uh, thing to him. Um, yeah, if a moloid empowers somebody to KO opposing character or a moloid chaos an opposing character uh you gain one mission point boom yeah just because i, I want to keep that trend going fabian cortez More bystander after playing <laughs> fabian cortez i'm like ah beautiful i love KOing molecule man to get three mission points this is so beautiful right. i hope they continue that trend by giving me random mission points on legacy cards because it's really fun fabian fabian's just ah oh, such a cool figure my next pick this one seems i guess in a way unfair because this character already has a duo figure legacy but let's give him another one i'm talking about dormammu and loki Feels strange giving loki another duo legacy card in my opinion but i do think a dormammu and loki working together to the avengers is a really fun legacy card and i really liked dormammu and loki when they came out in adw i think 220 points is, is a little steep uh, for them, but uh, they're fun. So I would like to see they do some stuff where they can mess around with and make mindless one bystanders and remove objects and all this cool stuff. So yes, more bystanders, which means yes, more mission points probably. So just sure. give them weird mission point abilities. They only have traits besides their last two clicks. They have a special damage power. So and it's like it makes no sense. So when Dormammu and Loki miss an attack and they have no action tokens, after resolutions give them an action token. So just double token themselves when they yeah. miss it like really it's like a negative damage power which yeah, is interesting struggle for the evil so, eye yeah yeah it's it's them fighting kind of each other it'd can't, be neat to even see a trait them. i could also like see them like hammering over each other which is why they don't succeed because all this infighting would be really neat yeah i think dormammu and loki would be an interesting one and i've never owned this figure so oh, i really also just want to pick one up anyway because it looks really cool so i actually remember um like when objects were like first like being really prevalent so it was like mighty thor and this figure was still legal uh, i remember like it being played at the lower point value obviously uh just for the simple fact where you could like move you could like tk move them up whatever and then do the free action to turn a special object into a mindless one you like free action uh that object and place a mindless bystander in that square and then like get rid of that object um I remember like that interaction specifically. It was a lot to invest in for just that object, but it was like a a tactic that was like used from time to time. And the mindless ones weren't terrible. They were like psychic blasts, something. Oh, is that what they were? I think so. Oh. Uh, I still have a case of ADW waiting to be opened that I just have, which I need to film a video with. Maybe I'll do it on one of these really windy days, and it's just a painful <laughs> unboxing for every, for every Yeah, do it outside. Yeah, so, okay, they're not great. They're si sidestep, four speed sidestep, nine attack, psychic blast, 16 defense with toughness, and two damage, six range. Not terrible. Uh, I tried to search freak. them. I'm like, why aren't they coming up? I'm like, I typed in midless one instead of mindless one. Yeah. Good old Bat Freak uh, on HC Realm says, mindless ones keep getting better and better. Let's let's check the old one. Yeah. Well, oh, Yeah. For 100 points, I'd say this is better. <laughs> oh, for, yeah, 100 yeah. points compared to zero. This one's 
This one slaps Ooh, pretty good. I, I, but he's wrong, though, because the newest mindless, mindless ones are worse than the, oh, they the less defense. They, less, they have they the same defense. Step, yeah. They lose sidestep. Yeah. What is this mindless Don't one? Don't keep getting. I think those are made by the Dormammu. Oh, that's the Dormammu, also, right? the single base like LE. Yeah. Oh, it's a single base. Oh, okay. Didn't uh, know. He came um, out in, yeah, 2015. Uh, yeah, I have that Dormammu. I actually had like four of those at one point, but I oh, never played that one because well, only a few scene. years later they released the 2x2 two two Dormammu, like the reprint of the, uh, whatever that was, Galactic Guardians or Guardians of the Galaxy, whatever. No, Galactic Guardians 2x2, two two, right? Yeah, Galactic Guardians, yeah. Because yeah. he came with like some other, I think he came with like Watcher or something. Yeah, the, so, the newer one was like the roll three dice, um, nothing can like prob it. And he was like purple instead of black. Um, yeah, 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 different. Yeah, I, I like that duo fig. It's a newer take on a duo fig. I don't think it was done as well as like the more recent duo figs. Uh, if it does, if it did something like the Thor and Loki one, where it's like one turn you can do Dormammu's bystander powers, one turn you can do Loki's bystander, or yeah, like whatever, you like switch back and forth. I think that'd be pretty solid. Um, I also have a Loki pick because we have heard of like the Thor that was going to be a legacy card. So, you know, Rick Jones, Thor, and what was the Murdoch. third one? Modok. Yeah. So Modok's a villain. I guess that's technically the Captain America villain. Eh, he could work that's what I would Iron think. Man as well. Yeah. He's not Iron Man too, though. Yeah. yeah. He probably makes more I guess sense he's than gonna be an Ant Man villain. So <laughs> yeah, he's all over uh, the place. So my Thor, my Thor villain pick is. Uh, the Mutations and Monsters Loki, not mm-hmm. only because I own him, but because uh, did you watch the Disney Plus show where, you know, that like old Loki, he's like, uh, great purpose. And then he makes like that giant emerald city behind him. Uh, yeah. We got him clicked in Disney Plus. But this is the figure that I would have picked for that guy because this Mutations and Monsters Loki, he's on a flight base. He has this giant emerald effect coming out of his hand doing some magic he's holding his cape in the other fist he has giant horns he's very angry he's a very classic looking loki uh 160 points 12 attack with psychic blast eight range two lightning bolts phasing teleport with uh flight and 12 speed three damage with prob and vulnerability mostly though uh cool sculpt and He's got all of the uh, abilities to, you know, do traits and stuff because he's got nothing printed. There's no card for him. So I think that's like the number one thing is that uh, you could add whatever traits you wanted to this guy. And yeah. if I was going to add something, I think like I would add something, you know, obviously traded shape change is something that's like severely oh, yeah. lacking from this specific Loki. So something like that. Uh, Something that gives him a bonus against, like, Asgardians or Deity would be kind of fun. Because, like, this is, like, classic villain Loki. Um, I don't know. Something like, maybe, like, if you're going to spit something out, maybe, like, spit out, like, a little Frost Giant or something. Or, like, a free barrier. I don't know. There's a ton of things that you can do with Lokis. Uh, He has no mind control to speak of either, which is a classic Loki power. So, there's so many options when it comes to traits for this guy. And I just think that it'd be something really fun to work with. I think it'd be really cool. Is this is also like the one that has the masterpiece, right? I think. Oh yeah, actually, I believe so. Yeah. This I mean, this is just a beautiful sculpt. And now, like, I type in Loki, and I'm like, wow, they did not make another Loki until Hammer of Thor. No. And yeah. after that, until Avengers movie, and then it's like, man. And now in modern, we have like pretty Loki so because of Disney yeah. Plus, you know. It's weird. I'm also clicking through them. Man, they give Loki the starting phasing 90% of the time. Wild. Yeah. Like, even all these modern ones, we know he has like starting phasing. Ace. Loki just phasing man for life. Uh, yeah. yeah. Just because it's a beautiful sculpt. Yeah, give him I would the, the free, free equip made. the Tesseract from Disney. Yeah, Plus. also let him do it. <laughs> so he can, he can, uh, when he phases, he can at least get prob with it. Oh, wait. He already has. This Loki already gets prop with his phasing. Maybe give him like traded mind control, and then after he phases, I will say or something. If not this one, the Chaos War one also has a really solid sculpt. I'm just going with this one specifically because uh, he is traitless, and Chaos you, could, War like, you cool. could slap three traits on there and make him real fun. I'll say that Chaos War one has much bigger horns. 
yeah. uh, Loki's powers and the size of his little horns he's got on his helmet. Yeah. Huge. All right, my last pick, and I think no matter what way, shape, or form, we get a version of this character as a legacy card. I feel it really strongly. But it's Kang the Conqueror. This one is the Supernova 048 veteran Kang the Conqueror. I think he's really cool. Triple target, 8 range, 1 speed, 13 attack, 18 defense, invulnerability, 4 damage, flex, running shot. Um, he's got solid attack values. He's got a lot of 13, 12, 12, 11, 10s. Uh, he goes down to a 10, 10, 9, 8 on the last 4 clicks out of his 9 click dial. Before that, he's always an 11 or 12 or 13, just wild. Um, perplexed, range combat expert mixed in, all this cool stuff. He's 199 points. Just because we saw on the bystanders that there are Kang the Conqueror bystanders, I would really like to see it, like a Kang the Conqueror legacy that spits them out. I think that'd be really awesome. However, it makes me think that it's maybe not a legacy figure, it's a main set figure, because traditionally, the bystanders that are legacy figs aren't in the token pack, as we saw with like the Thor and Loki legacy bystanders. Uh, and like the APOC ones and all this other stuff. So it's it's kind of iffy, but that's like a a guess. But I would just love, I still think no matter what, we see a version of like Kang somewhere in like an Avengers Legacy. Yeah. I feel it very strongly. I'll agree with that, yeah. I picked like some like kind of like out there ones, but I feel like Kang is a solid pick. And I don't know exactly which one I would go with, but uh, this Kang... I mean, for all the reasons that we've seen multiple legacy card or yeah, mul- multiple legacy characters picked, I think this guy fits the bill. Um, yeah. It's solid sculpt, and then it's also just like a, a really solid top dial. It's all yeah. honestly a solid mid dial too. Like, well, not true mid, but like a solid like one through four dial. Um, and then depending on like what kind of traits and stuff they give him. I like he doesn't the, fall uh, off as hard as some people do. I mean, his defense tanks like all old figures. Yeah, he doesn't fall off crazy hard. No, not like my Hercules pick or you know anything. I think oh. like I don't know. Maybe they'll go with the uh, the Chase Kang. Yeah, uh, which Chase Kang? Uh, I think it's the only Chase Kang to be honest. Star Trek um, original series yeah, Chase Kang, Klingon Empire from the Klingon Empire Kang. Yeah, that's oh, he's geez. got patience, vigilance. They will make a mistake. I will say, like, <laughs> in the challenge, Kang is like the same costume, but it just looks more prominent, proud, standing Kang. But he's got like a one damage on all versions, except his is a yeah. uh, Trin has a two damage with RCE, and you it's so. Really... Man, they all have RCE. Like, you really have to like boost his damage somehow. Man, like uh, I don't think they lend themselves to being legacy carded as much as this Kang does. No, works so much better with legacy card. The other ones before that are just all over the place as far as like the Kang dial goes. They have like ten attacks and stuff, and I think Wizkids likes that big beefy thirteen attack stuff. You know, as as we've seen. So yeah. it'd be cool to see this Kang. I really like it. Yeah, a 13 for 4 is so much cooler than a technically 14 for 3 um, yeah. that goes to a, an immediate 14 for 2. Uh, yeah, it's just, uh, with yeah. app, it's like, oh, I don't like this Kang, I don't like it. Plus he's like dual but, wield- yeah. wielding, some more, yeah. more Kang looking, in my opinion, with like the color scheme and stuff. Yeah. It's so action, like vibrant, the double guns, the leaning, like, you know, stepping forward, it just it looks so dope. Yeah, yeah. those are our legacy picks, guys. Let us know if you want to pick them up, by all means. I'm going to pick a lot of them up. Uh, Calder, you chose a lot of Supernova picks. Why is that? It's like, because I own a lot of Supernova. <laughs> so, like, a lot of these I already do own. Uh, but I'm going to pick up uh, mine and Simeon's picks, except for Fing Fang Foom. That's a bit yeah. too much of, a, of an investment. Sorry, Simeon. <laughs> no, yeah. That was like the one pick where I was like, I have to put it out there just because I I want to will it into the universe, but I don't actually. For sure. If you put me to like the test, I don't actually think that Fing Fang Foom will be. There is three versions, and you can pick them up for yeah. like, a reasonable amount now. Uh, but no, he was not like mass, he, like he was not mass like produced or sent out. So most people won't have a Fing Fang Foom, um, even if his stats do still hold up. I just don't see it. It'd be really yeah. cool though. I mean, it would be. It instantly adds that like big shelf piece. I know. Besides your Fing Fang Foom pick, uh, and I didn't choose a like big shelf piece one, and typically WizKids has been doing like two by twos, 
mm-hmm. and stuff. So if I had to throw one out there, I would say the Quinjet guys. That's like the most Avengery one yeah, I could think of. Quinjet. Maybe the old giant girls, giant man. Uh, I know some of you said like the Miss Marvel giants, Mighty Thor, potentially. Uh, yeah, yeah. Mighty Thor. Yeah, Those Mighty Thor, Marvel girl, giant ones. girls. There's Could a lot of Avengers and AI, which was Avengers Star. Avengers uh, Infinity. Yeah. yeah, Avengers Infinity. Yeah, there's a lot of Avengers, Avengers in that set, apparently. So a lot of two by twos that could get picked. Yeah. Um, I don't think they'll do the Pym Particle Tank. That'd be wacky if they did. How how no, wacky? It's just the tank, you know, it'd be so weird. <laughs> I loved the Maybe. tank. I loved the the aspect I love of it. the tank, but. I don't know if I want. You have to do the keychain too, though, right? You can't just legacy. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You got to do the the tiny tank to go into like the the actual tank that drops. But um, other than that, like two by twos, um, tough, tough. Yeah, no. I think it's more likely to be like like a peanut base kind of thing, maybe. I would say I could see peanut bases. I don't think they'll do any vehicles because they're kind of straying away from vehicles right now. Yeah. Um, one that we, we didn't seen... mention that like is yeah. uh, possible because like we've seen a lot of people requesting it online recently is the Avengers Prime. Yeah, I was just about to say that. Yeah, and as much as I hope that it's not made, it'd be kind of cool to see it back on the table. For that, I will say I do think it's possible with the amount of people trying to get one. It's like, hmm, inner circle, inner circle. What's going on here? I would say, who knows? I don't know if I would buy it purely because it might get a legacy card. I wouldn't buy it based off that. But I would say, if you're an Avengers fan and you like a really cool big three, you know, Cap Thor, Iron Man sculpt, it's a really beautiful sculpt. Avengers Prime does. It's got a beautiful like a gold base. So I would buy it for that reason, not for the reason that it's like might be a legacy. No, and I feel like I bought it years ago. I feel like as far as chases go, like we know Rick Jones got picked. But like to be honest, he was the weaker one of the weaker of the Avengers assembled chases. Not like right. the weakest by any means, but like oh, Avengers Hawkeye Prime Goliath. has held its price for a while. Like yeah, Avengers has. Prime has never been cheap, and by cheap I uh, mean like sub thirty dollars. No, I picked it up for around fifty. That was yeah. a few years ago, and I think people are buying it at like ish right now. So it's like been it's around there. It's a bigger investment to make if you're purely going for a legacy card, which I wouldn't just an adventures fan i'd say totally buy it now and hope it you know and if it gets a legacy card then good job you bought it before anything crazy happened but uh, before that i don't know if i'd risk it just for a legacy card no while we're uh on the topic of this stuff we're gonna jump into our listener question there are dozens of us dozens since we're talking about uh, upcoming sets malcolm asks uh, a couple of questions here Upcoming sets, previews so far, which hero clicks do you want, and what set is it from? So, you don't know this character's dial, but I am definitely most excited for, out of all the figures we know in upcoming sets, the Soldier Supreme. Absolutely. Hands down, bar none. Um, 100%. Brooks Ian? I'm partial to Soldier Supreme. I think that's a really cool concept. Uh, Arachnite is a very strong like contender, though. Like, yeah. I feel like... That's a fun enough combination where I'm interested to see where they'll go with it. It's either going to be a real miss or a real solid hit. Like, there's no in-between. It'll be really good or really bad. I will say, after reading... I'm pretty sure I mentioned this on the podcast. After reading the Let There Be Peace Suicide Squad, like, kind of trade they had, I am excited for the Peacemaker. Um, but I was going to be excited for him no matter what. But now I kind of have an idea of what his dial might I am still pumped for so, All right. Uh, number two, rank the upcoming sets for most wanted to least wanted. Um, we only know about three, and that is the Batman team up, Avengers Forever, and then the Spider-Man, Spider-Man. Beyond Amazing. I yeah. believe those are all the only three we know about. I don't think there's any creeping down the pipeline that I'm totally unaware of. Uh, but it's definitely Batman, Avengers Forever, and then Spider-Man. I'm excited for all of them, for all the changes they bring. But yeah, in a rank of most to least, that's what it is. As far as figures that they'll probably have with them, I agree. Like, I, I mostly want, like, DC back in the game. I want to see more Lanterns. I want to see what they do with them. I really want to see what Legacy cards they have in, like, that Batman team-up. Um, I am and dying to see the Legacy picks. Ugh. Avengers Forever is just, like, such an open book as far as, like, what they could possibly put in there. That I think that's awesome. And then Spider-Man, I'm still, like, I know it's been technically three-ish years since our last Spider-Man set, but I'm still like, I think I have enough Spider-Man stuff for right now. So 
as much as I like really want to see a really cool Sinister Six and they've got like a Craven and like a Morbius and stuff. They've got a lot of figures that like we've seen sculpts of that I'm like interested in. It's just at this current point, it's my it's the least interested in. It might change yeah. a lot. And obviously I really want the terrain changes that come with that set. Mm. I think that's gonna be really interesting to see how they implement that. But um aside from that, like as far as like just figures alone, I think that's like number three for me. We know so little about it, so it's just tough. Yeah, you know? it's hard to say because yeah, they could like release the, they could release like oh like here's one of the sub themes and it'll completely change my mind. Right. Yeah. Based on what we know the most about it being terrain, I am super super pumped for it. Like in the terrain aspect, but for the rest of the set, I don't know about. That's just purely from a rules. So I'm more pumped for just like a, that rules change, than I am for that set because I don't really know totally what's going on for everything in the set besides like spider people i feel like there's gonna be a lot more spidermans with super strength in that set oh dude there's gotta be right just for the big change just, to it yeah. there's gotta be uh all right next up he says which characters do you want in the upcoming sets i'm gonna i'm gonna break it down into for each set so for avengers forever i want the captain america with the phoenix force uh that was prominent for one issue in a recent run of the avengers we have echo with phoenix force I really hope we get Cap with the Phoenix Force or Batman team up. I really, really want Yellow Lantern Guy Gardner. We've gotten red, pink, and green Guy Gardner. Yellow Lantern's really cool because he beats up Sinestro and takes his ring when he doesn't have a Green Lantern ring, which is hilarious to me. Maybe he also asked Lobo for help. He may or may not, uh, because obviously a dude can't overpower Sinestro. Um so like that's really fun. But his ring works off of like how much he gets beat up, he gets stronger, which is really cool. So I would like to see a bizarro type dial. Where he just gets better as he goes. Lantern thing. And then for Beyond Amazing, I don't really know. Uh, maybe a cheap, uh, funny J. Jonah Jameson. I haven't gotten a bigger J. Jonah Jameson. I think we've already seen him, though. So Beyond Amazing is kind of like, I'll take anything. More than likely, I said I know I said J. Jonah Jameson, but realistically, it's like a really, really good Craven. I want it just to be a nasty, yeah. hunting, gonna murder Spider-Man Craven. The Momoa Mess Craven. you up. Yeah. Yeah. What about you, Simeon? Man, so from Avengers Forever, I'll say like to go along with the Phoenix Force thing, I really want to see the Phoenix like Howard the Duck. I want to yeah. see like, more <laughs> yeah. Howard in the set to be like or more Howard in like Hero Clicks to begin with, but I think Phoenix Howard the Duck would be really fun. I think it's goofy enough. They did like Venom Groot. Venom baby yeah. Groot. So like can we not get Phoenix Force Howard? Can we not like Make it like really gross and really stupid. Like, be awesome. Yeah. From Batman team up, there's so many things I'd love to see. Uh, but I'm going to stick with like something like lantern ish. Uh, I don't want to see like a return of Despotelis, but I think a return of Atrocitus would be really sad. Yeah. I think that's a fairly prominent guy. Like, we're doing all the lantern colors. I can't think of a more prominent like red lantern, to be honest. Mm. I feel like Atrocitus is like fairly important. We already saw a deck star, and I would have liked to have seen a slightly better deck star, if we're going to be honest, than the one that we got. But I'll yeah, take I him. Agree. I really like like super pets and deck stars. Like one shot, like issue is pretty cool. Where you like his owner gets like he. I, I think he's like abandoned. He's like a stray, and his owner takes him in and like takes care of him, and then gets like mugged and murdered, and then he oh. like cries out in rage, he's angry, and kitty, the yeah. ring like seeks him out, and it's like. Dexter, you have great rage within you. And <laughs> it's like takes revenge on the the people for his owner. So that's a fun one. I could see my cat doing that. Not really. <laughs> I could see my cat. You think Larry loves you that all. much? No. I could see yeah. my cat like eating my eyeballs when I die. Oh no. Because she does not care. But uh <laughs> Dexter nonetheless. Uh Trocitus. I love the Red Lanterns. I think they did like even more so than blackest night i think when it was red lanterns that like was like the big bad i was more invested in dc at that point because i think that was oh, a much sure. cooler storyline when it was like anything the, with the red lanterns, lanterns were crazy and not like the black lanterns um but yeah like obviously seeing some entities come back would be awesome too and like any kind of Ooh. aspect a better aspect than just being possessors if like entities were actually a threat would be cool uh, think if, like 
entities sorry not to we'll no, get to the amazing by that like what do you think of like entities or like you know the main head honcho of that lantern core when they make a construct it gets like plus one combat values like atrocitus yeah. makes the chainsaw but he gives it plus one you know yeah you make them like whatever. cost a little bit more or like yeah not necessarily make them cost a little bit more but like atrocitus should be like a deeper stronger tile anyhow and then especially yeah, like, like larkley's you know yeah. he should be able to make larkley's especially constructs. he should have like the Baron of Battle World trait. <laughs> yes. Because uh yeah, you should be able to perplex like his construct up by two and maybe like the weird world like people can't increase their combat values against him or yeah. change his combat values. I don't know. He needs to have a lot of help because he's the only one. So Yeah, he's one dude. <laughs> yeah. I'm the only person in this dang lantern core. But yeah, something like that would actually that'd be really cool if there was uh like you know, you've got you've got all the like the green lanterns from this Earth and that place and uh, you know sector twelve nineteen like places that don't matter, but then you've got like Hal Jordan, you know that guy that at one point killed all the guardians and took all the lantern like he's a fairly important lantern. Maybe he should be better at using a lantern ring than just be fair, like the one we have is already so baller. That's true. true. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then from Spider Man, I okay, I, I think this is a dark horse pick, but um so we know that the chase theme might be like split. It might be just Gwen's. And I think if we could get a Gwen. Gwen Surfer, a silver Gwen Surfer. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I think that's the best thing that I could oh. ever hope for. I think that would make my year if it's Gwen Surfer in the chase that I would buy uh as much of that set as I needed to to pull multiples of those and then I would just oh, like no. super glue them onto my car onto myself I would have them everywhere oh. silver Gwen Surfer is probably the best thing that that set your hood on them like, <laughs> like the Puma or whatever should be your little hood on it's a Gwen yeah. Surfer yeah yeah and I hope it's like the best version of Silver Surfer that we've ever got so it's it's Gwen Surfer for like eternity is the best hero clicks version of silver surfer that's my greatest hope for that set evil bad man simian bruce you're bad man oh uh, yeah <laughs> uh malcolm then final question is what sets do you want in the future and which characters do you want in it i've talked forever about a green lantern slash just lantern core focus set i don't think we'll get that anytime soon after this batman team up so i'm going to disregard that uh, so what I want, and this is another selfish pick, is a Captain America set. Specifically, I want the Captain America core in it. We've never gotten the Captain America core. We're missing a ton of members that complete it, um, which is like Sharon Carter of Earth. What She's not actually Sharon Carter, but it's American Dream. I really want an American Dream. I want a Captain America core version of like Bucky Barnes. We haven't gotten Bucky Barnes as Captain America since the fear itself, like weird starter scenario pack version of Bucky Barnes's cap. He like, we need one so bad. We've got a million winter soldiers. We need him as cap, please. Uh, and then it's like, I think it's Luke Cage's or Isaiah Bradley's like great, 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 great future grandson is like president of the United States as Captain America. And that whole storyline is super fun. That superior is like the main villain. Uh, I would just love it. That's what I want more than anything. Upset Captain America core. That'd be a dream come true. Union set you want in the future characters you want in it. Um, so my number one set that I would say would be a like villains forever set. So similar to Avengers forever, but literally the, the masters of evil forever. Yeah. Masters of evil forever, whatever you want to call it. It's like the, the villains are the main focus. And then like, maybe we get like six to 10 heroes like sprinkled in, but I want like a solid Marvel villain set that I can, you know, when I'm building like a theme team, a named theme team, I can actually grab some like sweet Thunderbolts. I can grab some sweet aim agents. I can grab some Hydra dudes, like whatever. I want a Villains Forever set where it's like they're actually like the main focus of the set. Um, to go along with that, I would say like a DC version. I would like to see a Justice League Dark set or like a more Justice League Dark focused set. And that's also. A, like side tangent as a hope for the uh the upcoming spider-man forever set i hope we get like some of the generics that we did from amazing spider-man like generic vampire 
zombie. Ooh, okay. That kind of stuff. I'd like to see a return of like, honestly, that could be its own set. Like there's no, there's no license needed to like just print like, you know, the rest in peace or undead set kind of stuff. Like but, undead um, set too. Please, whiz kids, yeah, I'm begging you. Like if so we awesome. just add random generics and like Marvel's like, oh, we don't technically own the rights to cab driver. What does he do again? And we're like, oh, well, he can drive 12 speed and carry yeah. two passengers. Yeah. And he's and 10 then when points. he gets really upset, he's got like four different guns yeah. he can use. He has a stop click with flurry and blades. Yeah. It's but awesome. like, no, like, a, yeah, as far as like a, a villains forever oh, yeah. kind of thing, where it's just like a set, like similar to Superior Foes of Spider Man, where it was mostly like the foes and some of the heroes. I mean, there's a fair amount of heroes in that one, but. I think like that is something that we don't see often enough, and I'd really like to see that um, characters that I would really like to see in that. Obviously, like I already talked about, like Red Skull. I don't think we've seen enough of him. Um, just like the main, the main like counterpoints to Marvel's like top heroes. So yeah. I don't really know what is Iron Man's like top villain. Mandarin, right? Like it's got to be. I think so. Mandarin. I think Obadiah it's. Spain? I think it's. No. Dustin Hammer. Like the Armor Wars guys? Like those guys like definitely give him some trouble, but I, I think it's got to be Mandarin. So like an updated yeah. Mandarin with the updated like equipment rules. I think you, Avengers Mandarin. Another you, like, another pseudo legacy pick. Avengers yeah. Mandarin. You, yeah, you swap in like a whole bunch of like text to allow him to equip all of those most recent rings kind of thing. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's that's my go-to. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah, I would dig it. I I think everybody always talks about like how much a villain centric set would be so awesome, and it's just because like yeah, you know, like just this year we got however many versions of Thor, and we're gonna get more, right? We're gonna get however many versions of Captain America, and we're gonna get more Iron Man, whatever, you know. Like we always make them in every yeah. Avenger V set. Same thing like, like the X Men. We get a ton of Cyclops, Wolverine, whatever. You know, we want more villains. We need to like. Like when WizKids makes it, if they make it, it needs to be not like the sub themes are like this group, this group. It needs to actually be a villain set, and then like you, you're allowed one sub theme of heroes because like Joker's Wild was mostly Justice League of America. Like it was a lot of JSA. It was a lot, <laughs> yeah, a whole lot of JSA and Joker's outsiders. Wild. JSA, yeah, yeah. There was a lot of superheroes in that set. I'm not saying, like, you know, you're not allowed to make heroes, but, like, they get their own sets. Villains are always, like, the side characters. So, like, you make a a full villain set and you give, like, only, you, like, limit yourselves to only, like, eight heroes. I think that's, like, solid. You know, especially in, like, a set like this where you could do, you, like, do multiple villains and then, like, their counterpoint, which is, you know, like, a 200-point Thor that's, like, able to fight off like the uh the wrecking crew by himself potentially yeah so like you you make a solid wrecking crew but you also make a solid thor that could potentially like battle against those the wrecking crew in like a 1v4 format you get like you make a cap and then um cap can like potentially fight against red skull who can generate like like yeah cap hydra dudes yeah Go through hordes of Hydra like he does all the time. Just yeah. one punch and they're down. Yeah. It'd be cool. Like that kind of thing. Where it's like you get you get a hero and it's a good hero. It's like solid. Maybe like the whole super rare spectrum is heroes. But the villains have like the advantage because there's more of them. Mm-hmm. I, I think that'd be a solid set. I mean obviously like I'm not the first to say this but, uh, oh, but I've always still. thought like a villain heavy heavy set would be like fun because we just don't get a whole lot of villains like and the same works for like dc obviously i think dc honestly gets better villain spread than marvel just because oh, yeah. they have yeah. more prominent villains like they got the crime syndicate they got the whatever joker's part of uh gotham city underworld i don't know yeah. anti-league probably my biggest wants if we do like a villain heavy set it's going to be a Hydra generic. We have not gotten just a straight up like Hydra agent. It's like Nick Fury. Like we've gotten Nick the Fury Hydra from Earth yeah. X. 
there was no Hydra agents. There's like Industrial Spy, you know, like Hydra agents in any set. The Ames, they weren't Hydra, you know, they had a keyword, sure. But we did not get a straight up like Hydra agents, Snake Fury agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., which is, again, wild to me. Really crazy. So I, I'd really like to see that, you know, if not in this upcoming adventure, like some villain heavy set, especially because villains are known for having like minions and goons and henchmen, despite Matt Murdock saying there's a difference between all of those, you know, like I want the Hydra villains, the AIM villains, the, the Magia goons again, you know, bring those back like any sector of villains, Ultron drones, etc. Like any sector of villains that have like minions and stuff. I want to see them. You know, minions of the mandarins, the keyword, and all that jazz. Doom's got to have his Doom bots. I'd also like to see some new Doom bots. We haven't had, I mean, those OG ones that we got in F4 are amazing. Don't get me wrong, they're freaking crazy awesome. But let's get some more. Get some more cool, stylized variation Doom bots. You know, and that's an easy filler thing in a villain like centric set for sure. Uh, all right. Yeah. Thank you, Malcolm. Thank you so much. We appreciate it. I do like that idea for a set, though. I like the idea of like the. Heroes are like the like main character comic run version of that hero, and like there's just an insane amount of villains. Oh, I would dig that. Uh, next up, we had someone asked for us to make a 400 point golden age spooky Halloween theme team. I kind of threw mine together because my go- yes for our go to my go to if it's like 400 golden age is and I'm a bad bad man say whatever you want is the zombie team base. Any yeah. chance I get to play that thing, I jump for it. I love it so much. Growing up, I mean, I was when I was younger, when the zombies came out, I couldn't afford to get all the zombies, and now I have them all, so I want to play them any chance I get. So it's for me, it's the zombie team base. They're fun too. More, I mean, they are not like fun and like not the, as OP as they used to be. Look, really are casual fun, but like you know, they oh. can be if like if other people are playing at the same level, it's fun. Yeah, yeah. Like they're not crazy competitive anymore, even with like the team base rules and stuff, because like do as much with team base rules as you used to once they fixed it but yeah it's like the fun team i had is cap wolf at 100 the zombie captain america with zombie with a plan from disney plus and then two versions of the starter set zombie cap at 30 and 40 colonel america at 55 and then finally the marvel 10th anniversary scroll captain america at 99 389 point team sadly not a monster theme team scroll cap doesn't yeah. have monster it's which not sucks monster. I think if you can talk to your venue, be like, "Come on, look, come on, it's a theme. Aliens they're like, monsters, they're like right? evil monster Captain Americas. Come on, give it to me." I mean, you know? I think he'd allow it. I just think it's funny. I like the alternate versions of characters, and these are all like monstrous versions of Cap. I think it's funny. So this would be a, a fun team to play. Like nineteen fifties, like when when Cap was like first being written, aliens were definitely considered monsters. Oh, 100%. So monster movies, alien movies. For sure have been monsters back then. Absolutely. Yeah. Gotta be. Gotta be. Uh, I just made a, I made a team of just things that I play a lot when it comes to, like, monster-related stuff. Um, I don't know. I think? No. This isn't even a theme team. Um, it's almost a monster theme team, but there's one specific character that broke it. So okay. I went with, like, some of my old polls and then... Uh, a few like newer ones. Um, so starting off, a figure that I I love can't find it currently. Uh, I have the card for it, but Moonborn Dune Wolf is awesome yeah. for forty five points. Let me tell you what he can do. He has the Mage Spawn team ability. So whenever the highest point character, which on this team is going to be uh, a very small character, but um, whenever the the highest point character takes a move action he can take a free action to move up to his full speed value he also has traded stealth and then when he is in hindering terrain he can use flurry his attack values are bad but he's 45 points and free like move and then flurry if he's in like hindering and stealth i love this guy he's awesome i wish i had more i wish i had a, a whole horde of moonborn dune wolves to use their mage spawn team ability. Uh, next up, a character that I collected probably the most of as a super rare is Hellcow. Um, she's super fun. Bessie, real name. Uh, so this is one of the few vampires I've healed to full. She doesn't get that much better when she's healed to full. She can basically like one-shot lower point characters, and that's about it. Um, honestly, 
it's a task just to heal her past her starting line because she only has two damage and she's got a nine attack. So it takes quite a bit of like convincing to get uh, this cattle out to pasture. <laughs> uh, yeah, but triple no, so bad about that one. That was so bad. The triple, the triple stop click is fun. I just, I really love this figure. Um, I like all vampires. I think I've got a few vampires in here. Uh, nope. Never mind. This is probably the only one now that I'm looking at it again. Next up, good old undead Dr. Frankenstein. One of the few support figures for uh, monster and like Halloween kind of themes. Uh, he has the trait, it's alive! Support is free, but only to target characters with the monster keyword. When Dr. Frankenstein uses it, increase the D6 rolls ult by plus one. So, pretty fun. It's, it's support as free and only as free. And then his special damage power is perplexed, but only to target characters with the monster keyword. If they have the Frankenstein monster's keyword, or Frankenstein's monster as its name, he can modify a combat value by plus two or minus two instead. Uh, I don't have any Frankenstein monsters. Um, but that's the chase from the set. Playing this guy with the chase is pretty fun. It's actually a fairly low point chase, so it's decent enough to play with him. Uh, he's only three clicks long, but... He has quite a bit. Uh, my more modern pick is Wanda Maximoff. She's the one breaking the monster theme. 19 defense, mystical. She's a mom out on Halloween. She's trying to protect her kids. In that case, in this case, it's a it's a moonborn dune wolf, a hell cow, a doctor, um, and the other stuff that we'll get to. But no, the 19 defense, the probability control that removes yeah, an action token when so you good. use it and it hits so good mind control i mean lower dial she gets three damage and 11 attacks so like she's no slouch she's got the whole all new halloween spooktacular which is shape change and then potentially healing um these were i mean it's a video that you haven't seen yet but coming soon mm. spooktacular people are awful <laughs> in uh a mixed br because yeah, yeah. Man, they've got so much stuff going on. It's like it's just hard to deal with them. A low um, damage. Right. So this is my highest point figure on this build. This is uh wow. what Moonborn Dune Wolf is following. It's WizKids LE from twenty seventeen, number zero zero six. Skeets. Yeah, bet you forgot uh, about Skeets. Uh this is Booster Gold's little little uh Skeets. It's a little, this is a little robot pal. Um so this is when Mr. Mind takes a hold of like Skeets. Uh, so if you play him at 115 points, he has a trait that is if Skeets is 35 points, he is KO'd when he crosses the red KO line. If Skeets is 115 points, he has the monster keyword and he's not KO'd when he crosses that line. So normal Skeets has uh, adjacent friendly characters modify their attack values by plus one. If that character is named Booster Gold, modify his attack value by plus two instead. He also has enhancement and the PD team ability. So it's a plus one attack, minus one defense to people within his range or within his line of fire. And then also a plus one damage for ranged attacks. And he's tiny with flight. But when he crosses that line and he metamorphoses into Mr. Mind, suddenly he has a stop. Skeets has the colossal symbol and can't be healed. I'm so hungry I could e eat a universe is that special defense power or no special damage power that he has for three whole clicks of the stop. Hungry hungry caterpillars. Yeah. Three clicks of stop from click three to five. Oh. So uh, he has that. He has zero speed with sidestep on the first click that reveals. He has Skeets can use penetrating psychic blast with a range value of nine. When he does, after actions resolve, give an action token to all hit car targets. He has two lightning bolts, so nine squares and two lightning bolts. Um, Twelve attack, four damage. Then he goes from that sidestep. If he gets damaged again, he hits another stop click where he's suddenly a hypersonic. Eleven for four. And then his last stop click, he's an eleven for four with a nineteen impervious, also hypersonic. Um, just a fun figure. It's Skeets is so fun. I really like him at like the lower point value where he's just like a super support little piece. But I like him even more at the like the monster value where he turns into a giant randomly. Next up, 10-point Moloid. He's just there for the Empower. 
because that's all he's really doing. He's got plasticity, sidestep, stealth. He's a more modern piece from the Fantastic Four set. Uh, he's got toughness. He's tiny size, so he can be carried by pretty much anyone on this team. Um, actually, everyone on this team, because Skeets has the flight team or the flight symbol, so he can even carry him. But yeah, Moloids are fun. Uh, power if Moloid and another friendly character named Moloid are adjacent to the same piece of blocking terrain. Destroy it. Well, I've only got one on the team, so it's not happening. Uh, and then the final piece de resistance on this team. So we've got Moonborn Dune Wolf, we've got Hellcow, we've got Dr. Frankenstein, Wanda, Skeets, Moloid. The last piece, I'm at 295. Right. It's, who? it's Barbatos. Barbatos. Uh, the Rebirth Bar- Chase. <laughs> For 100 points, this big old bat of death and doom, uh, he's got the giant symbol. He's got quintessence. He's got eight range, one lightning bolt. He's got friendly characters with the monster keyword. And this is the main reason I play him. Can use the Batman enemy team ability. So they can all copy whoever's got the highest attack value. That means Moonborn Dune Wolf can copy, uh, let's see, Skeets' 10 attack top dial or uh, Skeets' 12 attack on his stop click. Oh, yeah. Uh, instead of having, yeah, instead of having that very sad seven or eight attack on his last couple clicks, uh, Hellcow starting off with that nine. No, no, I don't think so. Uh, I think we'll start off copying the 10 attack. Um, you know, that kind of thing. Barbados is really cool. I've built around this figure a lot because it helps monsters so much. Uh, it also has a trait, that, or the same trait, like affects Dark Knight's keyword, but this is the only Dark Knight. So I guess Barbados technically um, gives himself the Batman ally team ability, which is stealth. So there's that, quintessence and stealth. Uh Special speed power is drag you into fear. Phase and teleport. Phase and teleport is free, but only to move up to four squares. And when he does, after resolutions, adjacent opposing characters have a mobile until your next turn. The fun thing about this is you can free phase like four, give some people a mobile, and then phase ten away because that's the speed, or yeah, that's the speed value on that click. Um, not sure how great it is, but I mean, making people a mobile is pretty fun kind of ruins yeah. a lot of people's days uh has psychic blast with three damage and a special damage power that is opposing characters within six squares that can use outwit perplex or support can use battle fury that means they have battle fury so if you can use outwit perplex or support you suddenly have battle fury and you can't shoot which is even more amazing if i just made you immobile and phased 10 away so what are the chances you have 10 range to shoot me not great. Um, special attack power for the last four clicks. It's steel energy power. Make any number of close attacks, each targeting a different opposing character. He will heal for each hit. So that's not combined with the phasing power, but you could technically like phase up into a group, stay there, maybe sidestep around, make a bunch of close attacks. You do have giant reach. So it's a pretty solid 100 points. There's no stop click or anything. He's kind of squishy, to be honest. But uh, with Quintessence and Stealth and the rest of like the, the cast of monster people. Also, Wanda giving him a 19 with her defend, potentially. Good. There's a lot of stuff that this team can do, and I, I really like it. I really like, you know, top dial Skeets gives uh, Barbatos a, a 4 damage, 11 attack. And minuses like one from uh, the opposing character's defense. Uh, I like when like gap when the gap is closed. Moloid increases the damage by one. Hellcow can do three damage even on the first time, like the first attack, which is mm-hmm. pretty big. Honestly, helping out Hellcow is like ninety percent of this build because that's like my main oh, goal. That's when what I it's run all about. Vampires. Dude. Yeah, you, you got to chew cud and get to that hypersonic. That's <sighs> that's what it's all about. Blood chew cud. Yeah. Bessie's got a, right. got places to go. You know, she's That's got right. things to see. He's on the road, dude. It's a highway to hell, cow. You know how it is. <laughs> All go 55. right. Yeah. Jumping into the discord questions that we got i already did the whole patreon plug but that's the only way to get into the discord. So think about it. It's a cool place. We have a fun time. Luke, Luke, Luke asks, how would you feel about HeroClix rules updates having a numbered system like D and D? Pretending the current rules are 5th edition. The potential to allow players to do things like run a 1st edition or 3rd edition game. 
I think it's different for like D and D that doesn't have like straight up the figures that are made after a quote unquote hero quotes edition or right. rules change happens works specifically with those rules changes. So a second could, or third I edition could roll game a character for like first edition D and D right, and it would work with first edition because that's how I rolled it and that's like how I built it. Um, I couldn't roll like a 3.5 or like a fifth edition D and D character and give them all like the like different cantrips and stuff and then try and play them in first edition. So yeah, yeah I would, but yeah, yeah, go ahead. I mean, I just, yeah, I just wouldn't quite work with like the overlap of like how like the figures are to then like rules. Cause all these figures are made for certain rules, which means if you wanted to play a first edition game, it would be with like first Soaring. edition characters you know it'd be boring and lame and everything like, i think this is like a, a rules a so they can use soaring even though they don't have a soaring oh base. yikes yeah i would like to enter soaring mode please it'd be like impossible yeah just impossible with the new flying after soaring is out of the game you know so i don't think the overlap would quite work this comes off very classic clicks to me, so I'm inclined to not like it. A very rules denier type uh, yeah. idea. It's an interesting idea. I mean, um, I don't think it translates to hero clicks, though. Uh, I'll, say, IMO, I I'll say this: like, if you were playing back when there was previous, like, if you were playing in 2014 and you have the core rule book and you have the PAC from 2014 or like whatever, sometime around then. You have everything you need to play that quote unquote edition of Hero Clicks. If you have the 2017 core rulebook and PAC and stuff from like Mighty Thor era, you have like that second edition. I won't even consider the fact that like there was a original edition like pre pink powers and stuff like that. Like as first edition, that's just like too far back for me. I uh, I don't know. I think. Going forward, if they wanted to implement something like this, like a legacy ruling kind of thing, that'd be something that you could work like forwards. But I feel like as it stands currently, where like our very first iteration of rules was like kind of weak, and then we slowly added stuff and got like stronger. And then, you know, at some point there was like pick hypersonic option one or two, pick TK option one or two. How many people are going to opt to play that way? I don't feel like that's going to be like a strong contingency of players that are like, oh, I really liked when I could hypersonic option two or when like my, uh, what was that? What was that symbol? Uh, transporter. Team oh, ability. transporter. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'd really like to be able to transporter right now with my, I don't know, moonborn dune wolf. Uh, yeah. like, you know, we did, we don't make characters with like some of those symbols anymore. So yeah, I'd be fine with it if they wanted to do it. It just, doesn't make a lot of sense for them to try. I mean, Fair. technically, those additions exist. You can still find yeah. those additions, tec- quote unquote. Really, they, they do, right? You just go back to 2013, yeah. get the pack and rule book, and yeah, then, like, there you go. It's just www.heroclicksworld.com. Yeah. They're still in the 2014 era, so you can just play by those rules. There you go. We'll call it uh, HW edition. Yeah. There you go. H- Heroclix World. Tyler M. asks, will Heroclix ever release 3D bystanders or an STL file to print them ourselves? They have released 3D bystanders. Um, there's Red Wing, there is uh, Tippy Toe, there's Eisenhower from Colonel Social dog. Stripes. Yeah, uh, uh, they Red Wolf's dog, logo. Yeah. Uh, Green monkey thing, Henry. Yeah, Henry. Um, they have, yep, they have absolutely released a bunch of 3D bystanders. I think what you mean is like, D mod, or he says a STL file to print ourselves. I don't think they'll ever release a no. like 3D printable file. I think that's file. I don't think WizKids is no, like. I, I feel like, like that. that runs in an STL file. I feel like runs into um, like copyright territory and like yeah. licensing stuff. So if they if they were just to be like open like their digital files to be like yeah, here's like our. Uh, our Rick Jones bystander. You can go ahead and print them out yourself. Like Marvel might yeah. have something to say about it. I don't know. Yeah. Um. Although I will say there is nothing stopping you from looking up random stuff and printing your own bystanders or using custom elements. Bystanders no. are allowed to be represented by literally anything. They don't have to be the bystander token. So if you want to make custom figures that are 3D or whatever, or, or even just being yeah. like, you know, Rick Jones has Namor, Captain America, Blazing Skull. Those all exist somewhere. 
absolutely. Uh, in yeah. real hero clicks that you can just go buy and the, like uh, use the Kokomo you know? event. Um, PJ handed out uh, Thor oh, and yeah. Loki bystanders yep. for that duo figure. Um, those yeah. were STL files that somebody had printed out. So yeah, it's definitely possible. Um, hopefully, you found that look into hero clicks history about old 3D bystanders, but it's just so much easier to make tokens that. Ex- you know are printed and whatever to if we wanted to see more bystanders this is the way to go if we want to see less then it would be like make them all 3d if, but then we just get less bystanders overall because of the amount of work um brad asks are y'all protractor um, sure yeah they're pretty cool help out pretty necessary i feel like i'm pro i'd say i'm protractor this goes I don't really, to a joke that he made. i don't really like the angle that this question's coming at uh me yeah um it's 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 gotcha. a cute question, but uh, I feel like Brad's being pretty obtuse about it, so mm. I'm not going to answer. Okay, it. gotcha. Thank you so much for all of that. <laughs> Matt Reed uh, asks: So after sizing everyone up at Worlds, when will the YouTube Hero Clicks <laughs> boxing match happen? Better to strike, strike now the while the iron's hot. hot. Oh gosh! Oh. After seeing Matt Reed at Worlds, I feel like every other Hero Clicks players just like smaller uh i'll say that with i mean we did not challenge matt reed to flex off against uh ryan redman who may have similar sized arms i don't know redman's pretty big i don't know what his workout regimen is i know matt reed is like you know lifting 700 pounds on the daily yeah. for no reason like keg tosses and yeah buck lifts and all. matt reed's like oh, my man. car ran out of gas so i put it on my shoulder and carried it to work know um, how many jars of peanut butter that man just, opens a day it's insane <laughs> crazy he's keeping the peanut business alive uh yeah it's just by the sheer amount of volume that he eats uh protein peanut butter now uh sizing up everyone at worlds um when would the youtube youtube hero clicks boxing match happen we do have plans to initiate some challenges to other content creators it probably won't be yeah. in this specific way but I will definitely leave it open if any other HeroClix content creator listens to us and says, yeah, we'd like to box at some point for charity, then, uh, you know, the invitation's open. We do have a challenge that we will issue at some point. It won't be in this kind of aspect. But, uh, yeah, I will say my my, uh, original consensus is the same. I feel like... My stamina is just higher than most hero clicks content creators. Yeah, I'll still fight anyone. 100%. Yeah, Matt Reed. I, I, I won't fight Matt Reed because he yeah. quite literally lifted me up with zero effort, and I felt like I was going to go through the ceiling when he did so. Ooh. Like I think he didn't realize that I don't weigh as much as I look, and so when he went to lift me, he like tried a little bit harder, and like I just felt gravity leave my body. And I <laughs> almost hit the ceiling. Terrifying. Yeah. Oh, I don't like it. I don't like it. Uh, Punchy Ranch Man asks, if you could pick three characters to always be in modern in some form, who would they be? Be an updated version, alternate version, etc. Question. Uh, number one for me always has to be Captain America. Main reason I play this game is that he's in it. You know, if he was not in modern for some reason, I'd feel pretty, uh, pretty bummed. Pretty darn bummed out. After that, it can really be about anything i like having a war machine in modern i'm a big war machine fan so i would always like there to be a war machine in modern any version of him but like a classic gatling gun missiles on the shoulders like war machine uh to me is like huge for enjoyable uh and then i always like i always like a lex luther in modern i like a good lex luther i like the one we got right now with red sun he's dope yeah those would be like the three characters i would say i'd always like a version of them in modern yeah, dang. I'll have to I'll have to somewhat agree and be like I think that I always want a Wolverine to be in modern even if it's not like yeah. something that I f- I find playable. I always like want some option. Um I want to go with a figure that I always want to be in modern. I always even though I don't like venomized characters, I always want a Venom to be in modern. Not necessarily like I mean obviously that probably includes a Spider-Man as well. But uh, I'll pretend like it doesn't. Venom's one of those like few villains where he can be like a good guy at the same time. And I just think there's like so many options for what his dial can represent and do. Uh, 
I always want one to be in modern just because also like sculpt wise, there's so much that you can do with a Venom sculpt. And we've seen like a lot yeah. of cool versions. Also like just the Tom Hardy Venom. So good. Wow. Absolutely. The best like, version of Academy Venom Academy ever made. award winning movie. Yeah. Just he beautiful. submerged himself in that crab tank. I felt yeah. that. Well, yeah, I represented he was me. like, I want a Snickers. And he was like, no we eat humans and he was like no here's a snickers and he was like i feel better and he was like you're not yourself when you feel a snicker or when you're hungry whatever that was great great or, great part of the movie or possible uh advertisement i can't remember which <laughs> so yeah wolverine venom i'll say my third one man <sighs> i could definitely go a few sets without like some of the named characters i'll say Let's say like Dracula because it's been too long since we've had a Dracula, and like I could, always in modern. You want a Dracula every two three I could years? Always, yeah. I could always have a new Dracula in modern. Okay, like vampire dials are always fine with me, and we've got plenty of versions of Dracula. Or I'll just, ah, uh, man, not necessarily a vampire dial, but yeah, I'll say Dracula. Um, I I would say if I was gonna pick like a DC figure instead. Ah, oh, man, who would I go with? I'll say a Mr. Mind. No, not Mr. Mind. I'll, I'll say a Martian Manhunter. I think Martian Manhunter could be do. He could be done like ad nauseum and still interesting to play each time. The, the amount of Martian Manhunters that we've gotten that don't play like the other ones are high. So we've got like the, the cookie hunting one, the cookie thrown one. We've got that one's the... Awesome. Uh, People can hate it, but it's awesome. Yeah, so. the what's the the Trinity War one that's got like traded ships yeah. and super senses? Super powerful Martian three hundred yeah. point Martian Man. Three hundred, cool. two hundred, one hundred. Uh traded stealth. We've got like some good Martian managers, but he's like a figure that you could straight up make one that's just like a very powerful mind control piece, and we haven't really seen that yet. Like a a la Professor X kind of mind control piece. So like there's there's options with him. I could see him staying in modern forever. Swamp Thing is another one. Yeah. Ooh yeah. So long Protect the swamp. green. Yeah, checking the green. He could have so much cool stuff to do with all the new green stuff coming. No, it's different. It's like mostly Hinder still. He's so something like similar to like Medusa. I think would be like the next Swamp Thing I want, where he makes like living like living hair, except it's like creeping vines or something and it just like copies oh, his go. attack and like fun his like uh stats and powers and stuff that seems yeah. like a good man thing thing to or not man thing uh small oh. thing to do yeah. different things yeah there uh, are two luke, things that are different but similar uh, luke asking f mary kill hc realms clicks nexus and facebook i i mean this is pretty straightforward i think you kill clicks nexus mary hc realms Ooh. And uh, yeah, I see that's the tough thing, right? HC Realms is like got the real. I feel like toxic... you get a disease from HC Realms. It's that's pretty. See, uh... That's the problem, right? But it's pretty always in there for me. As far as Otherwise, it's like go. it's Facebook though. You HC I mean? Realms, like, yeah, I will say HC Realms rough. has been like the most consistent in my life as far as he, she's goes. always been there for me. Yeah. Facebook is can be full of drama. HC Realms, if we just ignore her bad parts, which everybody has to do in marriage. <sighs> Um, yeah. and she's good. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like, so yeah, I feel like Facebook has the best content and the most consistent content. HC realms is obviously something I can't not have in my life. Um, exactly. Because between trade threads, uh, threads where people say like REV will save the game and poor people, um, so people like that that say those kind of things are in HC realms. And then clicks Nexus is just like, I mean, it's, it's great for units. So it's like yeah. the, it's the weak link in my formula as far as like what I need in my life. Um, it's still something I use, but yeah, I guess if I had to pick one to kill, it would be Clicks Nexus. Oh man, do I do I marry Facebook, who will literally throw me in jail if I say uh, something it doesn't agree with? That's why I didn't want to marry. Facebook. Or do I marry HC Realms, who definitely will give me a virus like once a week? We will. Oh man, you don't have to. No, do the deed be a Mary necessarily. Lord knows plenty of people don't. Just so. be a monogamous. It's more of a spending time yeah, with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sleep in separate bedrooms. Who do you, 
I'll what do you want to be around all with the time. HC realms? Yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll have a guest house that I I crash at all the time yeah. with HC realms. Yeah, thank you, Luke, for. Uh, it's like you know you know what the, yeah. no 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 you know who actually gets married is Let's Clicks. There Sweet. you go. He's also the best one to look at. I yeah, would say personally. the most. The most interesting one to look at, the one that doesn't hurt my face as much, and has never yep. once berated me for any reason. Also true. Yeah, you're right. Lex Clicks is the true marriage that happens. Lex Clicks is 100%. Uh, Matt Reed goes on to say, is Hulk actually the strongest MCU character? If so, show your work. I don't I don't think so. I mean, it's like Thanos is the strongest MCU <sighs> character. Yeah. No? Thanos, like, Thanos handily, like, stops... Hella? Hulk from doing a lot of like swinging and stuff. Yeah, without all the gems, I really Hulk feel like hands. I feel like Hulk was due a redemption arc against Thanos and didn't get it. But um, yeah, like as yeah. it stands, the Hulk was like in gladiatorial rage mode, and Thanos like easily punked him. So, like, man, I don't know if like that Hulk, a gladiator Hulk, was technically weaker than. Our first showing of he was MCU. starting to talk and, and stuff. By, yeah, now, by first showing, I mean like actual MCU. I don't mean um, Norton. Uh, no, I don't mean Norton or uh, Banna. Okay, Banna, um, because yeah. technically Banna was like twice the size of MCU Hulk. He was like massive at certain points in that movie, um, and he like sprinted like sideways along cave walls or like canyons, whatever. Uh, as far as heroes go, I don't. I'm pretty sure the Hulk's stronger than Thor from what we've seen, but like we we haven't really seen like a test your might kind of thing. But uh, yeah, I feel like if they were in like a like arm wrestling match, Hulk. I mean, wins yeah, Hulk against easy Thor. takes that. Yeah, um, maybe even against Thanos, but like Thanos definitely like punked him with just like being better at fighting or I don't know. He took like Krav Maga kind of stuff. <laughs> Wild stuff going on there. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think we have to show yeah. our work because yeah, uh, we don't need to show our work. It's pretty true. Also, Thanos no longer high school and college, and I don't want to show my work because that's yeah. the worst. This formula yeah, guys, will be proven. Absolutely not. Thank you guys so much for asking those questions. Hope you enjoyed this episode of Dial H for Hero Clicks. Make sure to uh, ask us any questions you want. You can be like Malcolm, send us a message on Facebook, Twitter. Or even Instagram or even our email at dialatroheroclicks at gmail.com or like the rest of all these other cool cats and sending us questions through our Discord, which you can do so by joining Patreon at $5 tier or tier, higher. Ooh, excuse me. And then, yeah, being part of our awesome Discord community with early releases on videos and behind the scenes looks and all sorts of cool stuff on our Patreon. And make sure to... Uh, Go to a certain website and check out our legacy picks. Maybe pick them up for yourself if you want to, you know, go with our choices or ask your friends. It's a fun topic of discussion. Talk about your legacy picks. You can send us straight up a message if you want to tell us your legacy picks for Avengers Assemble or Batman Team Up, etc. Yeah, we love to hear it. Yeah. I don't think it's a bad idea to, like, to quote unquote gamble on legacy cards. I think it's fun. Something that's like interesting enough. The best part is like you're talking about figures that are old enough where at most they're like two to five dollars usually. If it's like a unique, maybe it's like ten dollars. If it's like an old chase or super rare, maybe it's like twenty. But for the most part you can find like, you know, like that Shang Chi that Calder talked about, probably yeah. like less than a dollar. It's gotta be like a couple of cents. Um, and yeah, you can find things like that and more at coolstuffinc.com where you can find not only the latest hero clicks sealed and singles, you can also find like board games and stuff like that. So use code dial five, get 5% off and check them out at coolstuffinc.com. Happy trails. So if you're looking for emotional satisfaction, my advice to you is seek professional hero clicks. No. Are you serious? Again? How many people even play this game? Like a hundred? Instant deadpan humor. Over How they, six uh, people humor? think I am funny. It's a hard day's work. Not that you know anything about that. Which you absolute fools. It's not witcher nonsense. I'm gonna make hero clicks like that forever. Are you kidding me? Hey, Google, attack someone. Let's attack Simeon because he's a jerk. Happy trails.